This is CS124, Lesson 1.5, Boolean Expressions. Prerequisites for today's lesson are knowing how to represent simple equations in C++ and knowing how to choose the best data type for your data. Today we're going over how to declare a Boolean variable and how to convert a logic problem into a Boolean expression. Boolean operators will be familiar to anyone who has studied logic. Boolean algebra is a method to express logical statements mathematically. This is important to us because computers are logical systems, therefore all programs are going to require some level of decision-making logic. We will cover the three basic parts of Boolean algebra, Boolean variables, Boolean operators, and comparison operators. As we've already discovered, declaring different data types is simple. All we need to do is name our type, then name our variable. You can initialize your variable to true or false using 0 for false or 1 for true. After these variables have been initialized, you can reassign them by using the variable name, the assignment operator, and the new assignment. In this case, true is the new assignment. We've already looked at Boolean operators, and now we're going to look at the three main operations in greater detail. First up is the AND operator. The AND operator evaluates true only if the left and right side are both true. So, for example, if we have left side set to false and right side set to true, the answer would be false. If both left side and right side are true, the answer would be true, and that is the only time where the result would be true. Next up is the OR operator, which is represented by double bars. The OR operator is true if the left side or the right side or both are true, but is false if both are false. So, as long as at least one side is true, the whole thing is true. Finally, we have the NOT operator, which is expressed with an exclamation, exclamation point. The NOT operator only requires one operator. NOT is true when the right side is false and is false when the right side is true. This expression would read wrong equals NOT right. This can be thought of as the opposite operator because it makes everything it's operating on the opposite of what it actually is or NOT what it is. Now we'll move on to comparison operators. First are the equality operators which determine equality versus inequality. Notice that equality is represented by a double equal sign and inequality is represented by a not operator paired with an equal sign. Let's try both of these examples. Here I have programmed in both of the examples we just saw. We have grade and the boolean value is perfect score and num students and the boolean value is class held today. I wrote a quick display down here where we'll see the variable which corresponds with the variable up here along with the value that resulted from this equation. Remember that if the value is false a 0 will display and if it is true a 1 will display. Because grade is 100 and that is equal to 100 it makes sense that the value would be true. The number of students is 21, and since it's not equal to 0, the value is also true. We'll finish off today's lecture by discussing the relative operators. You should already be relatively familiar with these, so consider a few programming examples. In this first example, we're comparing two integers, num boys and num girls. Is more girls will be true if num girls is greater than num boys and will be false otherwise. Since num girls is 8 and num boys is 6, is more girls will be true. In this example, has passed CS124 is only true when the grade is greater than or equal to 60.0. Grade is 82.5, so has passed will be true. When using relative operators with chars, Remember that the letter corresponds to a number in the ASCII table. The value for C is 67, and the value for B is 66. 66 is less than 67, so good grade is true. Let's try using Boolean values in a function. We're going to start by getting an income from the user. So now we have a variable to read into, a prompt, and our CN statement. Now what we want to do is find out if this income allows the user to be qualified for a certain tax credit. 
we'll want this to be a Boolean because you either will or will not qualify for this tax credit. We'll call it qualify and we'll take one parameter which we'll call income. Remember this income and this income are different. They're in different scopes. This income is in within the scope of the Boolean function qualify and this income is only within the scope of main. Now what we want is for the function to return true if you do qualify and false if you do not. So now if your income is less than or equal to a certain number the function will return true. If it is not less than or equal to a certain number it will return false. Now let's write our function call. This is our function call. We have the name of the function and the parameter we're going to pass in. This income will be passed in here to be used as the income up here. However, we want this function call to be in context. I set up an if-else statement, which you probably don't understand right now, but don't worry about it. Notice that this is our function call. If our function returns true, we'll output this statement. If it returns anything else, we'll output this statement. So let's start with a small income, like 500. Because this is less than the specified number, we call a 5 for tax credit. Let's run it again and try a really big number. This time we do not qualify for a tax credit because this number is greater than this number. Thanks for listening. Hopefully now you understand how the Boolean operator works and how to use it in your programming.